Are you interested in the paranormal? Murder mysteries? Cryptocurrency and thought-provoking interviews? Then check out Crypt Ricks I've Been Thinking on YouTube or every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Studio A at Revolution Radio. Freedomslips.com Welcome to the Crypt. <laughs> Hello, today is May 25th, 2015. My name is Dan Hennen. We'll be giving an update on today's broadcast on the uh, curious case of Mr. Eric Sayward. Last week, I published the latest timeline of events uh, on the Crowley case, and someone reached out to me with a curious comment about who is this Mr. Eric Sayward. Uh, really relates to this post here on the timeline. This was back in February 2nd of 2015. This is just now two to three weeks after. At 10.49 a.m., Facebook user named Eric Sayward sends the following instant message to Mr. Hennen, quote, you say one more thing about Crowley and I will pay you a visit. So that was the post, that was the post on my, uh, on my instant message on Facebook. And uh, after this timeline went out, um, uh, one person uh, in particular came forward and says, what is it, whatever came of this guy? What, where does, how does he fit into the, to the mix? And so I went back and realized that, um, I had actually been in an instant message exchange with this fellow, and I'll post it here um, uh, on the broadcast. This was February 2nd, and so uh, it starts off, I pulled it up um, here, and it says, say one, one, thing, one more thing about Crowley and I will pay you a visit. Um, I responded back, wow, dude, who is this, and do you believe the official narrative at 10.55 a.m.? Eric responded with, I'm a good friend of his, and we already have people on it. I responded back, so you believe he did this? Eric Sayward, I don't believe anything until the facts are uh, come in. I just don't want his name tossed all over the place. We have this covered. I think that's very strange as far as, uh, we're just talking about a dead man here, David Crowley, at this time has been dead for about three weeks. Um, I don't know why it was so concerning to Eric Sayward why Crowley's name would be being tossed all over the place. And so I respond back, yes, very strange, the whole case, you know he didn't do it, right? Let me know if you want to discuss this further, it has certainly piqued my interest. We need to do the best we can to try to expose these lunatics. And then I wrap up by responding to his threat. Let me know when you will, when the visit will come, I'll be looking forward to it. Eric responds back, I knew David very well, very, very well. He was not the type to do something like this, but on the flip side, war is an ugly thing, an ugly, ugly thing. I was in Desert Storm and my father was in Vietnam, so I grew up with the long-term effects of war. I respond back, so possible PTSD? Sean Wright says him and Comel both agreed to do it. That doesn't explain it either. Eric Sayward responded, when did he say that? I responded on his posts. He said it three different times. Check the logs in PDF format. We're just looking for the truth here, that's all. And one day the truth will come out. But Sean Wright says, quote, the truth will never come out, unquote. Eric Sayward responds back, of course. I love Sean, but we disagree on some stuff. I write back, why would he make that statement? Eric, I have no clue. Dan, whole thing is goofy and follow, and, uh, and follows very closely how these uh, 
It follows very closely in how these hits are carried out. I personally don't buy the PTSD. The strange thing is all the, the threats that keep coming out. Why? God bless. Eric Sayward. What threats? Dan. Your threat. And the Sean Wright threats. How does it help to make threats? That doesn't solve anything. You would think you would want the truth to come out, right? What exactly does that mean? Eric, yeah, but I don't want people tossing his name all over the place. We are still having a hard time dealing with this. Dan, I would recommend to stay off this page. Still too early. Emotions are still playing a big part. Nobody here is saying anything disrespectful about David. Those who agree with the official narrative make me sick, and that is very disrespectful to think that this man did this. And then no response. So that was my correspondence with this, Eric. I wanted to look into him further. See, how does Eric fit into all this? From La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's right on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin, right on the, right on the border. Born 61372, places him at 45 years old. Eric James Sayward attended eight schools. Number two here on that list, I'm going to go through each one of these, Onalaska High School. Now that's in Wisconsin, looks like he attended there from 91 to 92. Now, being born in 1972 places him probably to graduate high school in the year 1990. Uh, that's just my guess. So, so I don't get this 91 to 92. Then number three, University of Wisconsin La Crosse, 88 to 91. 1988 would have placed uh, Mr. Shaw, um, Eric Sayward at. 16 years of age while he enrolled in the university. So perhaps that could be to be extremely gifted, extremely smart. Uh, and then Arcadia, number four, Arcadia High School, 1988 through 1990. That would make sense. Number five, Holman High School, 87 to 91. That's four years there. Kind of makes sense. Number six, Melrose Mindoro High School, 82 to 84. Now keep in mind, Eric was born at 72, so if this is correct, he would have been 10 years old when he attended Melrose Mindoro High School. Next one, number seven, Lake Placid High School, 1980. Uh, this cannot be the same, Eric, as this would have been an eight-year-old attending high school. And the number eight, Central High School, 1977 through 1980. Uh, this is uh, most certainly not accurate, as Eric Sayward was five years old at the time. So let's dig deeper. Let's find out who this is. I'm still struggling with the connection to this case. Now we found Eric James Sayward here, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Professional Status CEO at Wisbin Communications, Inc. Well, if he went to the university at age 16, it um, doesn't surprise me that he's a CEO. Uh, that, um, that could very well, be, very well be true. I did another search. It came up as CEO of Wisbin Communications. It makes sense. And LinkedIn, Wisbin Communications. Wisbin is a nationwide ISP delivering DSL internet, web development, and VOIP services. Started in 1998 to present. It's been with the company for 20 years. States he's the CEO. This also makes sense. Long time. Education, University of Wisconsin, La Crosse. So sure enough, uh, if he did attend that university there for three years, could certainly be it, but if he entered at age 16, uh, that could uh, could very possibly be the case. 
Let's look into Wisbin Communications. Very interested to see what this company is all about. It has eight followers based in Madison, Wisconsin. It's a computer networking company. About us. Wisbin is a nationwide ISP delivering high speed DSL and VOIP services as well as ad web development and hosting. Uh, this is on LinkedIn here. This is actually the company site. Um, and so the About Us is listed three times. Usually when you see that, uh, when you make the post, uh, if you're setting up your company's LinkedIn website, um, you will save it, you know, post it, make sure it goes uh, public or, or publish it, and then make sure the um, editing, grammar, spelling, all that stuff is good to go. And uh, It's odd that that About Us is listed three times. It looks like just as an error. Uh, perhaps no one checked it. Company details, wisbin.com, headquarters, Madison, founded in 98, privately held company, and employees 2 to 10. So the company website is wisbin.com. I'm going to go pull that up. Wisbin.com. And what comes up is an index of, and then five bullet points with some underlined hyperlinks. Not really a website, not a corporate web, web uh, presence, not a professional looking website. Looks like just the index here of a email, uh, email scraper, functions, images, and a directory called Victor One. If I go to Victor One, it presents me here, there's a screenshot of Victor One, it's just a login for the member area um, asking you to log in or, or register I'm not sure what it's what you're registering for here but it's called obit data Victor one so it doesn't look like a professional website it doesn't give any information about what the company actually does and the only site the only page that comes up here other than those um, links are just the Victor page for obit data I'd like to be I'd like to know more about that. Uh, not sure what that is. Please leave your comments below if you can think of it. It says search members or access your admin panel. Looks like a type of a login page here for administrators, um, perhaps. So let's see this. Uh, let's see more about this Eric Sayward. Um, this doesn't tell me much about Wisbin or what it does or what they do or what they do as a company. Now I see this on a search, on a Google search, comes up Eric Sayward, Sean Wright, and We Are Change on 9-11 events in New York, and the latest truther, Sarah Palin. If you look at the date of this article, it's September 9th, 2011, authored by Kevin Barrett. Now Kevin Barrett's a good uh, truther. I've spoken with him before, done an interview with him uh, before actually talking about this case. Um, so he's a good guy. 2011, Truth Jihad Radio. That's a, that's a truther station there. Uh, and they're talking about We Are Change from Wisconsin. Now, I always see Sean Wright's name active and also We Are Change uh, in Minnesota and California and Eric Sayward. So now I think we've got the right, the right Eric Sayward. The next thing I see is Eric Sayward of We Are Change with Tim Watts and Sean Wright. This is a post from August 2012. Um, Eric Sayward is hosting. Uh, Eric's a former U.S. Army demolition specialist and knew controlled demolitions when he saw them on 9-11. He's one of the Midwest's most committed fire-breathing activists. So he's connected here again with Sean Wright, hosting a show. This seems to be our guy. This seems to be the Eric Sayward that was making threats to me on my Facebook instant message. Now, did you catch this? Look at the yellow highlight. Eric is a former U.S. Army demolitions specialist. So it appears this Eric here, whether this is true or not, was in the military. I didn't see that in any of his schooling, any of his background, and nowhere mentioned on his LinkedIn account. Uh, Army demolitions specialist. So that's very interesting. So a further search here shows that uh, we are changed. This is Eric Sayward and Donnie Tsunami. 
another interview. And there it is, Eric Sayward's photograph. If you zoom in, that's an army photograph of Eric Sayward. So it doesn't really match up with his background, going to the university, being a CEO of a corporation. And if you look at the bottom, he had his own website, a snapshot, ericsayward.com, was generated in 2011. And this is his page where he's actually running for Congress. Running for Congress in Wisconsin's 3rd District, Eric Sayward. Now if we do another search on Eric Sayward, it looks like he's into politics. 2016, I've got it highlighted here that Sayward indeed ran for President of the United States in 2016. It looks like he's into politics. We are very active. We are change in uh, Wisconsin, running for Congress, and now he's running actually for the, to be the President of the United States. Another search shows that fundraiser site um, was helping, uh, they were looking to fund this is like a GoFundMe page or uh, a fundraiser launched, uh, helping us launch BAP Nation successfully. Eric Sayward set this up, asked for $5,000 goal, no contributors. It was set up five years ago, nothing raised. So it looks like this was something to help set up some mainstream media site uh, that never got really off the ground. In fact, not a single dollar was, was raised. So. Um, not sure what this was about. Now, if you go to Eric Sayward's E. Sayward on YouTube, um, this congressional guy running for president has, if you look at the very top there, second line down, 122 subscribers. Now, now it doesn't take much to get a couple hundred subscribers on, on YouTube, but um, for a man this vocal, this, uh, you know, a very active uh, political. CEO, great education, smart dude, 122 subscribers. Seems, I would, I would expect his uh, subscribership to be larger than that. Now we get this. Now we get this video. Wait for it to load. Here we go. My name is Eric Sayward. I spent approximately six years in the U.S. Army and Army National Guard during and after Desert Storm as a combat engineer. Uh, I specialize in military military-grade explosives like C4, TNT, and shaped charges. And basically, my, my training focused on building and blowing up airstrips, bridges, buildings, or anything else that would be, uh, you know, of strategic military importance. Uh, you know, the, f the first time I saw the footage of Building 7 collapse, I knew immediately that this was a con not only just a controlled demolition, but it was carefully planned out by a team of experts, because in my I'll pause it right there. Eric's photo is in the background, if you can see it. That is him. That's his Army photo. And in the back are some certifications, uh, certifications or degrees or whatnot. I'm not sure what that is. Now, he says in the video that he spent six years following uh, Desert Storm, which was 1991, in the Army. So that would place 1991, six years, up to 1997. And it looks like he founded that company, Wisbon, in 1998. That appears to be Mr. Sayward, and he is very active in We Are Change. Here's another video from the airport. All right, We Are Change, Wisconsin. We're here at the airport. Let's see what happens. Okay, uh, we're going to go outside now, hold up some time for a while. Yeah. 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 
He has witnessed us being very aggressively talked to by the TSA about their policies, and we will, uh, yeah, we lasted about seven minutes. So you get the bull, you get the bullhorn out, you can do that out here. Does it say anything about bullhorn? No, nope, oh, they didn't say nothing. Here, hold these. The <laughs> Where's the car? Here's the bottom. It says at the very bottom, my name is Eric Say Sayward, and I will change the world. Reminds me of the post on my Insta instant message where I will pay you a visit in all capital letters. So this is the guy, very active in the We Are Change. Now keep in mind also that the truther movement has been infiltrated. Uh, many good people out there, uh, many groups are infiltrated. We Are Change is one of the um, number one on the list of uh, infiltrated by people acting to be looking for the truth, but actually plants uh, by the government within the group to infiltrate. I'm not saying that Mr. Sayward is, but uh, keep that in mind here as we go along. The next place I found Eric Sayward was on this uh, political IRS form 8872, political organization report of contributions and expenditures. I've got highlighted here the period ending September 30th, 2012. If you think back now of what was going on in the Gray State Project in 2012, this is when things were really hitting its high note. Uh, things were moving along, the video, the trailer was released. The Gray State team had uh, gone to Tampa for the Republican National Convention. They were touring around, and they were really getting some big exposure. And this group here, if you look at the name, number one organization, Gerson for Congress in Egan, Minnesota. So now it looks like this person named Gerson, David Gerson, is running for Congress in the state of Minnesota. Further down on this report, is it mentions third quarter again um, and then it shows a number of contributions for the period this is and the, these reports are due quarterly and for any political campaign they've got to rep uh, report this into the irs on a quarterly basis the amount of money in in dollars that you collect in contributions and the amount of expenses that you pay in that quarter of expenses and so right here, the thing that caught my eye was the $37,483 of expenses for the period. That's a lot. The line above it shows the income for the period, $1,650. So they didn't raise that much money. I'm not familiar with the Gerson for Congress campaign, but they didn't raise that much, but they certainly spent a lot. I went through the itemized deductions, the itemized expenditures, I'm sorry, and looked at some of the things that caught my eye that related to the Gray State Project. Hothead Productions, uh, that's David Crowley's production company, on a, an expense of $3,083 back in July of 2012 for video production. Now that would make sense, David was doing a lot of uh, filming and video production at that time. The next page I see a name, Eric Sayward, uh, $500 in July and the purpose of the expenditure was consulting. At the bottom of this, I see another entry for Eric Sayward, 500 for consulting. Next page, I see, I see Sean Wright, also doing some consulting for $1,000 in August of 2012. At the bottom is Eric Sayward, more consulting, $500. Number Next page here at the very top, Sean Wright, consulting for $1,500. Second line highlighted is Eric Sayward, consulting for $500. Next line, Eric Sayward, consulting for $500. And at the bottom, Eric Sayward, consulting for $500. Next page, Eric Sayward, consulting for $500. Jordan Page, Fifteen hundred. Now, Jordan Page is the musician that came out after the Crowley deaths were discovered and people were saying that he killed himself. Jordan Page was the first one to come out and say 
Well, that can't be because he had a $30 million movie budget that had been approved. And I don't believe after that statement Jordan Page said anything. But uh, here it says the purpose of the expenditure was a fundraiser. Jordan Page paid $1,500 for a fundraiser that he put on. He's musically inclined, so it was some sort of fundraiser that he did for the um, Gerson for Congress. Then at the bottom here we see Eric Sayward, 500 for consulting. The next page, Sean Wright, $1,500 for consulting. And then Sean Wright, $3,500 for consulting. I put all these together, um, the items that had been highlighted on the previous pages. We see the Hothead Productions at the top for $3,000. That's David Crowley. Um, Eric Sayward, $500. If you look at the dates, it was really, it looks like a weekly salary or a weekly uh, per diem that he was paid to do consulting work for Gerson for Congress, $500 every single week. Sean Wright, um, his dates were more sporadic. His was at a higher level, $3,500, $1,000, $1,500, and $1,500 for a grand total of $7,500 that he was paid for that quarter. And the Jordan Page is a $1,500 for the fundraiser. Gray State related, if you add up those four buckets, that's $15,583. If you recall on the first page, the entire amount of expenses for the quarter for Gerson for Congress was 37,483. So it struck me odd that 42% of the expenditures for that quarter for Gerson for Congress campaign was sent out to these four people, four individuals. Essentially, Grace State Project. Um, so that was a that was a, that's a big chunk. That's 42% of their entire expenses for that quarter. Now on the web, if you do a search for Gerson for Congress, I went back and looked uh, for the previous periods, and it does show the quarterly report, that 8872 report, the IRS form. If I go back to 2012, all I see, all the web shows is just the first, uh, the first one is just the second quarter. Quarter two. No beginning balance, so it looks like they just started the campaign efforts for that uh, Congress, uh, congressional run, and total uh, contributions, 16000 in, expenditures, 3000 out, and cash left on hand, 12000 So keep in mind, this is second quarter. This is, this is, this is second quarter, so this is April, May, and June activity. And so the next quarter that we're looking at here was July, August, September, where the payments were made to the Gray State Project. So uh, I'm not alluding to anything here, but it just seems odd that they only had $12,000 on hand. And keep in mind, the third quarter they started with 1600 in. So they only had $16,000 on hand when the quarter started, and they proceeded to pay out $37,000 from the campaigns out of someone's pocket. I'm not sure where or I'm not sure who but I find that odd and noteworthy that it's also not listed on the 2012 uh, Wikipedia for this election, for this uh, campaign. There should, be, um, there should be the second, third, and fourth quarters listed here with the grand totals. And my screenshot here shows just the one that will ever made the web. Uh, and this is, this is out there, this is public information. So there it is. It's all out there. Go ahead and do a search. Look at this. Uh, that, uh, I don't think, uh, you know, he didn't end up winning this Gerson, but uh, this is a strange financial reports for Gerson for Congress. And then I found this strange video from Eric Sayward. Uh, this is good lighting, man. This is really good. Now, if I and I can also turn my light on, but I'd rather not. Right. Let's ask this guy. You got a second for us? It's in. Yeah. Oh. I going to say something We are free stuff. We are free. For now, for now, maybe. What's up, David Crowley? Happy Dependence Day. <laughs> With the gray state looming. Yeah, that's, that's strangely ironic. 
strangely ironic. I was about to say, like, I gotta go get it. Okay, I got my camera set up. I'm just actually capturing B-roll so I can maybe sell it as stock footage online. Okay. Nothing major, but I met that Paul Session guy. Eric? David Crowley from Hothead Productions, Gray State. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a friend of Sean Wright's. Of course, everyone's from Sean Wright's. That's not Sean Wright's. Right. I don't know, people keep telling us that, hey, you know those guys are fuckers, you gotta drop back. You guys got the shit together. I'm like, thanks, because I felt like I was gonna shoot a job. <laughs> I've always felt like I could do more. So, you guys doing interviews or something? Yeah, why not? For whatever. We are changed? Yeah. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I saw the camera, I'm like, oh, who are these guys? Right, right, there goes Tim. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your family? Yeah. Let's go say hi to them. I want to say hi to your daughter. They're, they're nervous. Yeah, they would be nervous. Yeah, I think Broadcasting. What are you doing? No, it's just some arm. Just rolling. We're just trying to get some people on what they think. So after looking at that strange video with Eric Sayward meeting David Crowley on July 4th of that year, I'm not sure if it's 2012, um, probably was 2012, I had someone come forward and do a full criminal background check on Mr. Sayward. Remember now, we think that he is the CEO for Wisbin Company in Wisconsin with a degree from Wisconsin Lacrosse. What I got back sent to me was 49 files in PDF format with an extensive criminal history for Mr. Eric Sayward. Now, I don't have time to go through each one of these, so I summarized them in a spreadsheet. Starting at age 21, 1993, we have an arrest for criminal damage to property, and Mr. Sayward jumped bail. 1996, he was 24 years old. There's an arrest for burglary. 1997, he was 25. Operation of a vehicle after revocation, DWI, speeding, driving an unregistered vehicle. So these were the six years that he was working um, essentially for the uh, National Guard. Um, in and after the time of Desert Storm when he was uh, working as a demolitions expert. 1999, we've got a failure to pay child support from Samina Grimes. He was sued by Equus Computer Systems for failure to pay. He was sued by the Department of Revenue for delinquent tax warrant for Sayward LLC. In the year 2000, he was sued by Jennifer and Jason Cool for failure to pay. He was evicted and sued by Helfrich Enterprises, sued by the Department of Revenue for delinquent tax warrant for Sayward LLC, and in 2001, sued by Department of Revenue for delinquent tax warrant for Sayward LLC. So the questions I have here, there's a couple. Number one, 98, he the, starts off working for a company called Wisbin Communications. Now, it also shows here that he's running a business called Sayward LLC, which I see nothing on his LinkedIn, nothing about that, but he was certainly not paying his taxes, and so he was sued several times. It also looks like he was evicted, uh, had child support issues, and drinking issues. Well, the next page, we're into the year 2002. Sued by the state of Wisconsin for issuing a worthless check and evicted and sued by KWG Properties. 2003, sued by the state of Wisconsin for issuing a worthless check and did jail time. 2004, assault battery disorderly conduct resulted in jail time. He was also forced to take an alcohol assessment, drug assessment, domestic abuse assessment. So now he's 32 years old. I still don't see a history of employment anywhere for this individual. Wisbin Communications, he, he appears to be the sole proprietor of a web-based company that he just works for by himself and it looks like to me that he just put down that he was the CEO. Uh, probably was just a, a sole proprietorship company and that's all it was, a one-person company. Now in 2005 we've got now a felony aggravated battery disorderly conduct, did jail time, and a no contact order with Cassandra or Carrie, and a 
uh, it was mentioned in the police report or in the court order in the sentence that he was not to um, attend or go inside any bars or taverns. This was in 2005. And at the very bottom, he also was arrested for unlawful use of a phone, making threats with obscenity, disorderly conduct, habitual criminality, and to have no contact with Cassie or her family. We've got a, a history of violence here, at least seems to be towards women and uh, criminal habituality. Next page, 2006, he jumped bail and did jail time. He was also arrested for DWI, disorderly conduct, that resulted in no contact order with Corey or her son, keyword her son, another female, driving after revocation, curfew was placed into effect from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Then he was arrested for disorderly conduct using 911 to call for a false emergency and did jail time. Mr. Sayward jumped bail, also on a disorderly conduct charge. Now we're in 2007. Disorderly conduct, bail, bail jumping, habitual criminality. Then he did a seven-month jail sentence with electronic monitoring uh, to follow after that sentence was done. He had a court order not to, not to contact Amber. Then he jumped bail again and claimed in court, quote, I don't want to be on bond anymore. The next item shows a no contact order with Corey, that's the same woman from before, arrested for a DWI with open bottle and was sentenced to three years with an ignition interlock while he drives. So we don't have a little bit of crime here. We've got a, a long list of criminal behavior for Sean Sayward. In 2012, this is about the time now that he comes into contact with the Gray State. Sean Wright met him working on the project. It says here that he's sued now by Krista Kathleen Jahimiak to get a paternity test and to cover the insurance and birth expenses for her child. 2013, he was arrested for resisting arrest, obstructing an officer, and did jail time. 2013, he also driving while having a suspended lesson, license, speeding at an unreasonable speed. 2014, he was sued by River City Rentals for unpaid rent and evicted. So I don't believe this man's had a job or a serious job. He's been evicted, kicked out of many of his uh, apartments and rental locations. Nothing in 2015. Then we see in 2016 a speeding ticket and a failure to appear in court in Maricopa County, Arizona. 2017, looks like here he was sued by CAG Acceptance LLC for failure to pay and then sued by Checkmate Express Corp for failure to pay. Uh, the last thing of all, just last year, these, these are pretty recent now, sued by AAA Auto Title Loans. And it looks like he tried to buy a car or something and didn't pay that. Um, and had some maybe perhaps some debt consolidation or something to pay back some things so this is a man sued many times looking for cash has a criminal history and has aggression towards women Eric James I also found this from Wisconsin uh, mugshot Now, if you look up in La Crosse County Circuit Court, there's an active warrant list, and uh, feel free to use the link below to look this up if you, if you question this. But as of this screen print I did on May 19th, just of this year, just last week, Eric James Sayward still has an outstanding warrant in Onalaska, Wisconsin. It appears he moved to Phoenix, uh, Arizona, but um, he still has an outstanding warrant. So I don't know what his background is, where he works, what he does, but none of this is really adding up. Now here's a post on Facebook. Eric Sayward posts on Facebook, look at the date here, yellow highlighted, Christmas Day, December 25th of 2014. The relevance of this post is multiple. Number one, it's Christmas Day. Because this video broadcast I'm doing is relating to the Gray State Project and the murder of David Crowley, the importance of Eric Sayward here now raises my interest to the next level when he makes a post on Christmas Day. 
Christmas Day, according to authorities, the article by uh, Death of a Dystopian by Alec Wilkinson, uh, all place the murders to be Christmas Day. Even the documentary, David's own father, Dan Crowley Sr., says David killed his family on Christmas Day 2014. This is a post on 2014 showing that Eric Sayward is now makes the following post. While everyone else was over eating, drinking, and op uh, opening their gifts, I was reading books with my daughter. What do you think she will remember more? Kind of a warm, warm, fuzzy feeling here on this post. Nice guy, great father, doing things in the holidays. Um, because Sean Wright, his, his friend and also person with the Gray State Project, uh, his strange tweet on Christmas Eve was the only post that he's put on, on Twitter in the last five years was a photo of a Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. Uh, seems odd that uh, these Christmas Day things, Christmas Eve, especially in the year 2014 when the Crowleys were murdered, raised my suspicion. I looked up this post and I wanted to see if there was any editing done. Here's what I found. This post was edited. At 8.46 p.m., Eric Sayward made this post and actually received 10 likes. But a few minutes later, at 8.59 p.m., nothing was changed, but he edited it because he felt the need to include and tag 32 individuals and then repost the image. Basically proving that he was there at Christmas reading stories to his daughter. Now that's odd. He didn't take one or two people. He went out of his way to take 32 people on Christmas Day. That just could be coincidence. Maybe that is what it is. And maybe I'm reading too much into it. Now further down in that very same post, a, a, a woman by the name of Shayla posts, Is she at your house? And then further down, the same Shayla writes, is she living with you now? Here's what I think. We've got a post of Mr. Eric Sayward allegedly reading to his child on Christmas Day and someone calling him out on his very own wall by saying, you don't, but, but you don't have custody. She doesn't live with you. She wasn't even with you. Then, I'm guessing this picture was a photo that was taken at another time uploaded and posted as if he was reading to her on Christmas Day. She's got some kind of tiara on. Neither of them have Christmas related. There's no Christmas decorations in the background of this image. This was clearly, I believe, in my opinion, taken at a different time of, of him reading a book to his daughter. He uploaded it, trying to make people believe that this is what he was doing Christmas Day. So we get the edited post. To me, this just screams alibi. I'm going to post as many people as I can. I'm going to tag as many people as I can. So they can see me doing something good with my daughter. And you get one person calling him out by saying that couldn't be the case. It reminds me of this. Remember the ever popular Sean Wright Twitter photo on December 24th of 2014 with showing stacks of gifts stockings hung over the fireplace mr family man sean wright and then hadn't posted nothing on twitter for five years why would he post this photo photo why would he claim why would he post this as if he was home on christmas eve so now we go on to see mr eric sayward on facebook in a relationship in august we see Mr. Sayward moving to Arizona. This is after the murders now. Murders were, bodies were found of the Crawleys January. Kate Crawley was found August 9th or 10th. Eric Sayward is now in a relationship on the 11th. Moves to Phoenix to be moved in with his future wife, Desiree. Phoenix, Arizona. Now, his parents also moved to uh, relocated from Wisconsin to Arizona. So, 
one could one could argue that the he, he moved out of state to get to get away from the case one could argue that he moved in with his parents because he couldn't pay the rent he was fake seeing uh, legal and arrest warrants to this day in the state of Wisconsin who knows but he gets engaged gets married This is our house because I am your husband. When they get here, I'm going to break the lease out for them. And they're going to see it's not our house. Illegally, yes, it is. No. No, it's not. And I'm going to call your dad right now and just ask. Go ahead and you put your hands on me several times. So please. Get, please. I feel threatened in my house right now. Because I, I feel threatened. I asked for my key back. You. Obviously some fighting there, some domestic issues, and as of just this week, as a real man, it's hard to say this, but I'm over my ex-wife, I just have to be honest, now I have to move on. This is Eric Sayward now, divorced. From the woman down there. Now his LinkedIn does show Phoenix, Arizona. He's updated that. He does say that he's a freelance web developer. It shows Wisbin Communications as the company that he works for. It shows his background as Wisconsin lacrosse. Only 109 connections. Now to wrap things up here on this video, we see his Facebook page here, Eric Sayward. Looks like his nickname is Way. Uh, it does show that he went to Onalaska High School. That that confirms the first part that we watch uh, on that education. Onalaska lives now currently in Phoenix. But I found this strange. It now shows that he's from Brooklyn, New York. So in summary, is he a CEO of a company? Is he a rap artist? Is he a We Are Change or a criminal? You tell me what you believe. Thanks for listening. Are you interested in the paranormal? Murder mysteries? Cryptocurrency and thought-provoking interviews? Then check out Crypt Rick's I've Been Thinking on YouTube or every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Studio A at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Welcome to the Crypt. <laughs>
Authorities did not find David's blood on any of the bullets at the crime scene. Authorities do not know when David, Kamel, and Rania Crowley died. What we know for sure is that David Crowley has not been proven guilty.